Hello, welcome back. So I am in the process of putting together my plant room. This video is about my Ikea greenhouse cabinets. As many of you probably already know, Ikea greenhouse cabinets are all the rage for planty people right now. They are basically just bookshelves that are enclosed, usually in glass, and a lot of people are finding that they make absolutely perfect terrariums for those of us that are plant parents and have these, you know, awesome tropical plants. And they're great, they maintain humidity, usually temperature. So I went ahead and got one of these awesome Ikea greenhouse cabinets. The one I chose came in two different sizes. I'll post the one I got here. And I chose the half size for this spot over here where my Gloriosum is. There are some like kind of custom things that I'm going to do to it and, and set it up a little bit differently than the way it just comes out of the box. Uh, the way it comes out of the box is just fine. It comes with a glass shelf, which looks really nice, but it's not the most conducive to airflow. So I'm going to, you know, switch it up a little bit. Please excuse the way it looks. You guys already know me so well. I feel like it's okay if I show up on camera and maybe don't have myself completely together because today's just been running around, you know, cleaning, putting together all this stuff um, and continuing on that process now with my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. And for those of you that don't know me, welcome. My name's Ashley and if you like houseplant stuff, that's what all we do in this channel is houseplant stuff. The best way to not miss a video, I do try to post once or twice a week, um, is to subscribe now. If you want to sign up for notifications, that would be awesome as well. That way you never miss a video. Um, and if you subscribe, it should show up in your news feed. I'm also on Instagram and if you like giveaways and that kind of thing, you may want to check me out on there as well and give me a follow. So without further ado, I'm really, really excited to get going on this greenhouse cabinet. I saw that some people were saying it can take like easily two hours to put together. So fingers crossed it doesn't take that long, but uh, yeah, let's jump into it. One at a time, just this one right now. You can just put that one in the hallway, please. Thank you so much. Can I put it by the door here? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Oh, it might actually have you in my video. Yeah. Because I think your leg got in there. No, I just got my whole butt in there. Don't put your, Don't booty, put your booty on there.
I got it pretty much set up. Uh, I will post a picture of what my inspiration was. It was another third person on Instagram and I just loved the way that they had theirs set up, which really inspired me to do the custom shelves. Now this is all temporary the way I have my plants arranged in here. I'm gonna be just checking on them all the time and kind of moving them around as needed. I went ahead and got the half size one instead of the full size one because I liked the way it looked in this room. Um, I have some plans for this wall up here, but the full size one looked really awesome and I would really recommend these. So right now it says 67% um, humidity because I just opened it. It's been staying around, I don't know, 75, 80% humidity. And let me show you how I have it all set up. This has been a long process. So I did a lot of extra stuff that's not necessary. You know, out of the box is just fine with the shelves but I'm really excited to show you guys all the stuff that I did for it. So one of the things I recommend doing, you know, before you put the entire thing together is drilling a hole in the bottom. Um, I had forgotten about this step, but there's two parts. There's this piece, and then there's also a piece underneath that needs to have a hole drilled. It's really important if you're planning to have grow lights and fans, which you really, really do need with this type of cabinet um, to go ahead and drill this. So you can get a drill bit that will cut metal and then what I do is I cover it up with tape to keep the humidity from escaping. So when you're trying to decide how big to drill your hole, go ahead and drill a large size one and then you can cover it up with tape to prevent humidity. Um, that way you make sure you can have as many wires running through there as needed. I will be linking all the products in my description below that I use um, and I'm including links as well. So I got two grow lights. Um, and I only have one set up for now because I'm a little bit worried because these are 24 volt, I think. 24 volt or 24 watt ones. And um, they, I was just really concerned that it was gonna be too much light and I don't wanna burn the leaves. So I'm trying it out. Here's the other one. I have it kind of propped up here, but um, I might set that one up as well. Just kind of seeing how these guys do. They seem to be doing well with the one um, one light. So I do have the grow light stuck on there with the stickers that were provided. Um, one of them fell off. So I'm a little bit concerned about that one because it did fall off and kind of crunch some of my plants. They're fine, but um, I have heard mixed reviews on sticking them with what comes, but I wasn't sure how else to do it. Um, but this one isn't budging, so I just have to keep an eye on that. So I ordered these fans from Amazon. Again, the link is in my description below, and it came with two, and they're actually ones that are for computers, um, and they are working really great. This one, I have a uh, hook. I thought that these would be suctiony, and they're not, so I have it hooked up here with a zip tie, kind of just hanging off of there. And then the other one is just resting against the side of the cabinet. Um, and they're working really well. It's super, super important to have good airflow. Otherwise bacteria and fungus and still water will build up and it'll, it'll cause harm to the plants. Um, I highly re recommend that, especially if you're just gonna go ahead and drill it, drill a hole for the lights. Um, definitely get the fans. I think they were like $25 or something like that. And it's, it's super important for the plants. Now you can get humidity a number of ways. You can put a humidifier in your cabinet. Um, you know, if you have sphagnum moss and stuff that's pretty moist, you know, that will create humidity in the terrarium or cabinet as well. Um, you could put out a little cup of water. So I opted to get this little water fountain. I thought that would help with humidity and I just thought it gave it like a nice peaceful vibe um and i do think that's helping with the humidity and i just think it's really cute i ordered it from amazon as far as the shelves i tried to get it done at lowe's and they weren't weren't able to like cut it like this so i had a friend cut them for me and then i sanded down the corners so that they would fit and then i also drilled holes with the same drill bit that i used for the metal to promote airflow the holes probably weren't super necessary since you know clearly it's already getting good airflow in here but i just wanted to allow light to go through um, and airflow as needed just to keep the humidity consistent. All right, so now I'm gonna share the plants that I have in here. Oh, last thing, I have a humidity and temperature monitor in here as well. It's a little bit cold in here. I need to bust the heat up because I try to keep it at least around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, 
but with it being winter, it's a little bit colder in here. So this is my Epipremnum Shangri-La. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It actually grows like this with the leaves. It kind of looks like spinach. It's so, so cool. Fela with Must Love Plants gave me this one. She actually gave me quite a few of my plants in here. Um, and I just feel like this plant needs a little bit extra humidity. It's definitely a little bit more high maintenance than a lot of the other like Epipremnums. So uh, it seems to be happy in here. Then I have back here my Anthurium Crystal Hope. This one um, took a lot when I brought it back from the plant shop, like it needed a lot of recovery. Some of its leaves died, but it seems like it's stabilizing now and it seems pretty happy. I have these pebble trays set up to help with humidity. This is my Monstera Variegata Albo that was gifted to me from Fela. It's a cutting and let me show you guys. Now these guys like a ton of humidity but um, as you can see, like it's just starting to put out some baby roots, like the little white spots there. So I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. I don't have any kind of variegated Monstera, so that's my baby, man. I'm excited about that. This one is a Hoya Matilde cutting. Um, two were sent to me and one got root rot. So this one, I have it by itself and it's doing really well. It's, you can't really tell, but it's starting to really pump out some awesome new roots. Um, and I just want to give it every condition to be, uh, you know, to thrive. It's one of my favorites. Here's my Dragon Jade Deshidia, and it struggled after my move. So I've been nursing it back to health. It's doing better. It dropped off some of its little butts or nerds like looking things, um, but it stopped dropping them. And so now I'm just going to like let it hang out in here, give it some humidity and some nice, some nice uh, light. This is my Anthurium Clarinervium and I'm back and forth about keeping it in here. I'm curious what you guys think. It does, it has a flower that uh, is now in the male phase and putting out pollen. So I'm about to collect its pollen. Um, so the next time it puts out a flower, I can pollinate it and make seeds. But you know, this plant is, I know it loves humidity. And um, so we're gonna see how it, how it does in here for a little bit. Again, I'm not attached to any of these being in here, um, but these are some of my favorite plants that I wanted to, you know, give them a lot of humidity and love. This was the begonia that was sent to me by Botanicas um, in my recent uh, unboxing video, my begonia julau, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I have it in here for maximum humidity, and it seems to be doing well after shipping. It's not like super damaged, and I just open this up um, every day or so just to let it air out, and then I put it back on there. Down here we have a begonia. I got this one from Lowe's. It's not anything super fancy, but I just love the way the leaves look. Um, they're so lime green and beautiful. I don't know what kind it is, um, but I love it. Here we have a philodendron gloriosum. Such a good guy, and I'm so upset because when one of the grow lights fell, it broke off some of the new leaf, but I taped it up and I'm hoping it'll make it because um, this was its newest leaf that it had put out and, you know, it was happy. So we'll see. But yeah, Philodendron Gloriosum, one of my favorite plants. Uh, <laughs> here's my Melanochrysum, and it's actually doing amazing. The grow light kind of smushed it a little bit, but it's still doing okay. And um, it's been putting out some new growth since I got it, like from Cactus Club. All this is new. So I'm hoping a leaf will come out. It doesn't look like it was messed up too bad, but um, yeah, it's doing really well actually, like turning into one of my absolute favorite plants. I love how long the leaves are, how dark and velvety and green they are. I'm obsessed with this plant. This is one of my, this is one of my newest plants. It's a um, philodendron campo, I'm not sure how to say the whole thing, but um, this was in my recent unboxing video that I got. And then these little things are called lobes and it makes little ears um, that grow out. But I just love like the rust red of it with the beautiful lime green. Um, it's such a cool plant and it's really happy. I put it on this little pole immediately and it has new growth coming out. It's just, a really, really beautiful, happy plant. 
Back here is my Epipremnum Panatum Variegata that was gifted to me by Fela. And look at the roots it's making, guys. So I think I'm about to um, go ahead and, and pot it up. Now this one doesn't have a leaf on it, but it does have a really nice root system happening. So see how that goes. Here's my Anthurium Fingers. And this plant is super, super easy. I love the fenestrations and how it looks like a hand. And then the bigger it gets, the more fenestrations happen. Like you can see it's starting to put out another set of, of wings there or ears or whatever it's called. So really cool. And then back here, I have my little baby varicosum, philodendron varicosum. It's doing well from shipping. So it has like this new little leaf there and I'm just keeping a close eye on it. But I've had it for a few days now, about a week and it seems to be doing okay. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope you guys like it as well. I can't wait to give you an update. I would love to hear your feedback on your experience, you know, with those of you that have IKEA greenhouses, if you're thinking about getting one. I always appreciate your feedback, guys. and. So this is part one of getting my plant room together and then part two will be coming soon where I share the rest of my, the rest of my plant room. A little sneak peek of plant room stuff. Here are my two little prop boxes. Here's my Philodendron Mexicanum that I got recently, my Bloody Mary, and then my Golden Dragon. So I'm giving them some water as you can see. They were pretty dried out. Um, so I'm bottom watering those. Little grow lights there. So yeah, I'm excited to give you guys the rest of the tour, hopefully coming in the next few weeks. Thanks so much for watching guys. Please hit that subscribe button for all future videos and follow me on Instagram. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. I'll see you soon. Bye.